struggling with debt, bills, loans, credit cards, need a way out? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt matters. This is Omar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global, joined by Frank Warren at his office, which me and Darren were just saying, uh, you're not a minimalist, are you, Frank? It's quite full, this office. It's all the old junk I've collected over the years. See, when you get to my age, you, you, you accumulate junk. I wouldn't say it's junk, a lot and of it's dust, not. And dust, and <laughs> dust. I collect dust. And there's some nice bits in here. Uh, a lot of Arsenal, which obviously I'm not too yeah. keen on, but uh, you've got some... Well, yeah. You'll be, you, we'll convert you one day. <laughs> I don't know about that, Frank. But um, a lot of cars, motorbikes, music related stuff as well. Yeah. Top of the Pops. <laughs> top of the, that's the original Top of the Pops sign, there. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's me, Top of the Pops. Well, it's another week, another fight week. Um, yeah, Josh Taylor, first male world title fight um, since yeah. this whole lockdown period. So a little bit of history for Josh. Uh, it is, night. it is, yeah. We worked hard on it, getting the fight, and... Uh, yeah, we're working with Top Rank and uh, his management company, MTK, and we've uh, we've got it on. So we're delighted. And as you say, it's the first men's world title fight during this lockdown. And uh, he's got. A lot, I think he's got. I think it's going to be a tough fight. I think it's going to be a really good fight. You know, this fella's 16 and I think he's stopped 13 console. And same as Josh, he's uh, same, isn't he? 16 and I. Mm -hmm. So I think. Um, and I know I, 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 you know, keep banging on about these neutral venues, no fans there, not going in the Lions Den. So this guy's not going to be phased by that. So you're getting a little bit more out of him. And obviously at the level it's at, being this world title fight, and it's, he's mandatory, it's going to be quite interesting. I think especially more the case with Josh Taylor as well, because his fan base is quite ferocious Huge, up there in Scotland. Yeah. So uh, Kong Son's going into an, an empty arena uh, where he's probably done most of his fighting like that in his career as well. Absolutely. I mean, we were going to announce this fight, I think, for June or July up in Scotland. Um, and obviously it, it didn't happen. So um, the fans won't be there. He came down, as you know, to the uh, yeah. to Anthony Yard, when Anthony Yard thought, come down to have a look at the venue to get a feel of it, which was, quite, I think, quite a sensible thing to do. Mm. And uh, at least he knows what he's going into now. You know, he's a terrific fighter, one of the best uh, in the UK and certainly best in the world uh, currently. But... Switch trainers, first fight under Ben Davis. It'll be interesting to see if he's changed at all much uh, in that time with Ben as well. Well, it will be, you know, see what Brit Ben brings to the party for him. But uh, he obviously uh, likes working with Ben. There's no doubt about that. They've got a good rapport between them. And uh, that's that's great that they've established that. So you know, it's a new new era, new era for him. And, uh, you know, and he's got to come through this fight. It is a tough fight. He come through this fight. And hopefully set himself up for some really big fights next year. Mm. Ramirez being one of them, but I'm sure Jack Cattrall will be having a well, keen eye. You know, Ramirez and Jack Cattrall, that's that's a fight that's been ordered by the WBO, so can get that on as soon as possible. And Jack comes through that, what a fight that would be, wouldn't it? Him and Jack, that'd be a great British, all, round, all British fight. See what happens, but yeah, as you said, he's got to get through Saturday night. And uh, people in boxing are saying Kong Song is a, is a tough task. Obviously, people outside of boxing might necessarily not know. Yeah, I, it's funny you say that. A lot, of, quite a few people said to me, um, you know, this, he's a he's a much better fighter than people think he is. One thing's for sure, we're going to find out on Saturday. <laughs> Charlie Edwards uh, makes his Queensbury debut again. Uh, not an easy task for him this no. Saturday night. No, but he's back in the swing, and he's seen he seems to have a lot of enthusiasm, and obviously. Uh, He's got to get the old cobwebs out of his system, but he's in a game with an opponent who I think uh, fancies his chances. So, but you know, Charlie comes through this. We hopefully can set him up for a world title fight sometime next year. Yeah, it was a tough uh, year for Charlie last year. It was, it was, but you know, it's what it is, and you learn from that, and it shows the mark of a man. But Harry comes back from defeat. Do you believe uh, if he puts a good performance on Saturday night, comes through a uh, world title next for Charlie? I'm not saying the very next fight, but it, that's the plan for next year. I mean, obviously, we're all up in the air with this, you know, with where we're going to be able to live, live gates in soon, and it's that, that obviously restricts your budget for what you intended to do. I mean, when we done our deal with them, there was no COVID, and unfortunately, that's that, that's that's happened. So, um, no, we just got to take it, 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 you know, just take it as it comes. But the objective is to get him a world title shot next year. 
What about uh, the younger brother, Sonny, as well? Well, tight on the same horizon. thing, same thing. You know, Sonny's done really well. He had another good performance. Uh, what was it a few weeks ago? He looked really, looked really good, and I was really pleased with his performance. So now, you know, he's, you know, he's there or thereabouts, ready to fight for a title. We have been having some discussions about him fighting one of the champions. Couldn't have been this week. He's on holiday. So. No, not discussions with him. I'm talking about with the champion. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, okay, yeah. interesting. Could we potentially? See if it all pans out. Charlie and Sonny fighting for world titles on the same bill. Well, that'd be a great thing, wouldn't it? To be able to get them both on there fighting for world titles. I'd love to do that. You know, who knows? Well, they're, they're still both young, especially Sonny. They've yeah, got so many years yeah, in the yeah, game left. Yeah, yeah, very, very young fighters. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Tune in to BT Sport this Saturday night and uh, watch Josh Taylor, Charlie Edwards, and the rest of the card. Frank. Um, there could be another promoter in boxing. Let me ask you about Dana White. Uh, have you seen his recent comments about what he yeah, wants to I do? Yeah, I did. I see it as on BT. Um, see what he said. Look, he's been saying that for a long time now. I don't know whether he's going to be a promoter in boxing or not. Um, if he is, the more the merrier. You know, it makes the world go round, doesn't it? You know, get get uh, get more people involved. I'm, I'm all good up for that. But it's a different. You know, it's not it's not um, the same scenarios you've got with uh, UFC. Obviously, you, there's governing bodies and various things that you have to go through. Whereas, they are UFC are their own governing body, aren't they? They, they sort of one one stop shop for management, for promoter, and sanctioning body. That doesn't happen in boxing. Do you think he'll be in for a shock when he enters the market? No, he's not a stupid man. He knows. He, you know, he's uh, he, he's obviously aware. Maybe, you know. I'm sure he's got his ideas and what he'd like to do, and he's he's very good at what he does, and and but he's managed to build and grow a sport from nothing. But that's his that's his model. Boxing's been around for hundreds of years, and the way it works and the way it is is uh, is is going to be a very difficult model to change. Tough time to enter as well. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. But you know, we'll see what happens. How has it been for you? Obviously, you've been putting on show after show um, and you've been in the sport for a very long time. But has this been the toughest period you've had? Yeah, without a doubt. We've got our, well, we're still putting shows on. We've got our, this is our seventh show on Saturday. Oh, yeah, you've been putting show on show We've after put show. more shows on anybody. But so. just because of the gate situation? Well, that's a killer. I mean, it's obvious and you can only do something at a certain level. Um, but we're, we're, um, we've got, we're going to do at least number four or five before Christmas. So we keep that. The problem is where we'd normally have a card with twelve or thirteen fights stacked on it. We can only put four, well, I think we're doing about six now. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult. So we've got to keep busy. We've got to get, try and give our guys work. So it's, it's, and it's hard servicing all the different contracts. Yeah, I bet it is. Normally it must be, but yeah, I now. mean it is now. Yeah, of course it's now. Some disappointing news today, Frank. Um, government essentially said that. They were looking to bring fans back into the arena yep. uh, next month, but that won't be happening no. anymore. That's what we heard. We've been hearing that for about three or four days now. Um, I Let's hope they do something in November. Yeah, I mean, potentially could see a situation <coughs> though, where this whole year we don't get any gates. Could be longer. You know, there's, there's obviously... The reason we're getting all these peaks is because they're so people are socialising. That's why we're getting the peaks. And we're coming into a situation now, a season now, where you've got the flu season on top of this, and it's dangerous times. And obviously uh, the government and scientists are worried about the hospitals being overwhelmed. Because if they're overwhelmed in treating COVID cases, they can't deal with you know, the other illnesses and treatments that people, that, that treat people with illnesses and, and other diseases that they've got. They can't treat with them. So, that's the, that's what we've got to go with and uh, as as a country we have to pull together and as much as it's disappointing that's what we've got to live with and that's what we've got to do until they find a vaccine and we'll, we'll talk about how this uh, affects a, a certain fight of yours in, in a second but how do you think in in general the, the government country have handled the situation uh, look i'm sure there's a lot of things they could have done differently i'm sure there, is, there, there are things they they would do differently now but I don't think there's one single government in the world that really knows or ha had to handle this. You know, New Zealand was a big model, wasn't it, mm. when they shut down in New Zealand. They opened up and they suddenly started getting getting cases there. Um, 
and it seems every country now is, is starting to peak. They're starting to get peaks again in, in a lot of countries around the world. It, it's it, it's, look, it's a it's a it's a, a silent menace. It's no it's no air raid warning that someone's dropping a bomb. This just gets this ca people catch it, and people are not you know are not following the restrictions that that the, that or the the advice that's being laid down by the government are causing the, causing it to escalate. How have they been handling it? I think they just handle it on a daily basis. What I'm, if you want to, you know, the people who should be criticising the government would, should be the opposition party, as far as, you know, if, if the government are, are, are not doing it right. Mm -hmm. That's what they're there for, the opposition. And Keir Harmer's very, very quiet on the subject. Because I don't think anyone's got, I don't think there is any answers at the moment. The only answer is a vaccine and, and, ensuring that they keep the social distancing till they get that. And if people are not obeying that and not abiding by that, then we have a problem. I know you've got to focus uh, fight week by fight week and you've got so much on um, behind closed doors, but do you, do you worry about the future of the sport? I worry about, I mean, we will continue doing what we're doing. You know, um, BT are very supportive of us and we, you know, they know, we've kept boxing relevant, and, and as, as has Matchroom. You know, we've both done, you know, doing running shows. Um, I know MTK had done a few shows, I've done a few shows as well. So in this country, we're really working hard to keep delivering. The problem you have is the small hall shows. They got, you know, we got some TV income. They got no income. There's no TV money, so they got no no gate money. And is that those youngsters and those fighters who fight on those cards? What are they doing? They can't. They get no work. You got a lot of amateurs who are not getting any work at all. They, there's no, not say get, you know, they're not fighting, so the worry and the concern is we lose, you know, maybe a, a generation of fighters. That these guys, you know, when it's not happening. They go and do something else. Yeah, go and find a job if they can find a job in this environment. But it's it, it's very worrying times, and these are things that the, that, you know, as a sport that we need the government to look at and help us, and try and address it. Mm. There were th there's three heavyweight fights um, that haven't been announced yet officially because both you and Eddie were waiting for an update for the government in terms of the, the, the gate situation. So Joshua Pulev, Usyk Chisora and Dubois Joyce. Um, it looks like from what Eddie's saying, he will go ahead with Joshua Pulev with no fans. Um, Usyk Chisora, I'm, I'm not too sure what they've said. What's your take or thinking behind the, the Dubois Joyce fight? Well, we're going to, we, we've had talks and we continue to have talks at the moment with the management of both the fighters and the fighters and we'll make a decision on that. Um, obviously, if you haven't got a live gate, it changes the whole financial structure of the show. So we have to look at that and see what, we, you know, what we're going to do, make a decision. Is there a potential uh, case where that does happen next year, Frank? That may be the case. Uh, I'm not sure at the moment. And as I say, till we, um, till we, we are having the discussions and I'm hoping that we'll, we'll be close to making some sort of decision in the next few days on it. Oh, I'm trying to remember when that first was announced. April, April wasn't it? April the 11th. April 11th. I mean, one of the best fights going. I'm not just in British boxing, in world boxing. Well, yeah, the interest was phenomenal for it, and it's a great shame. And it's a shame for the two guys, because they both wanted it. I mean, you know, it's been, I think it's been a great fight, and a great fight for the fans. But uh, you can reassure us whether it's this year or next year, that will happen. At some it point. will happen, yeah. God, that's good to It'll hear. It that's good to hear. Another interesting uh, situation, aside from Dana White maybe entering the sport, is this crazy one with Floyd Mayweather and, and Logan Paul fighting. You know, look, for me, that's. Uh, that's just, they're freak shows, aren't they? That's what they are. You know, you've got Chavez's father. <laughs> All this stuff is freak show stuff. Look, you know, Floyd Mayweather was a very astute businessman a very astute fighter um, you don't you don't go appear on the Forbes highest paid athletes list and top it for probably four or five times without being as smart as he is um, why wouldn't he fight that guy you would say everyone will watch it there will be it's, it's a car crash isn't it they all want to be watching it and seeing it but I mean what do, what's he going to bring to the table to Unsettled Floyd Mayweather, even at his age now. But uh, not from a business point from view, just as a as a boxing fan yourself, Floyd Mayweather obviously is one of the best fighters there's ever been. Uh, to see him fighting someone like that, what do you think about that? Well, it's wrong, isn't it? But it's a business thing. 
It won't be happening otherwise. It is pure business. That's what he's doing it for. It's money. He's, he knows he's got a massive following, the guy. Um, but as a, as, as a match, it's a mismatch. Total mismatch. It's probably one of the biggest mismatches ever, isn't it? That comes to mind, yeah. yeah there you go. Even with the age. I think a lot of boxing fans obviously weren't too happy with uh, the YouTube fights, etc. But in that case, at least they were fighting each other. Well, you know, I, I, they trained hard, the both of them, and it, you know, they did what they had to do. Um, it was what it was. People bought into it. I mean, I couldn't, you couldn't, I couldn't buy into it. I look at them. I appreciate their endeavours and all what they did to fight. But, I mean, it was no different to me. It was like something... If, if it hadn't been the fact they were YouTubers, it would be... Who cares? You know, they'd be, it'd be like a... You know, that's what it'd be. But there was a lot of interest towards it for obvious reasons. Mm. And, you, you, you know, you get that and you understand that. But I think in this situation, because it's a legend of the sport and then a YouTuber... Well, it's a legend of the sport and a legend of the YouTube. That's what it is, isn't it? They're both legends, but maybe if it was a YouTube contest, he would beat Floyd Mayweather. He ain't going to beat him in a fight, that's for sure. Wondering uh, how many pay-per-view buys you'd, you'd do if you fought. How many pay-per-view buys you'd do if you fought, yeah. If I Other fought. promoters or... That would go insane, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm too old. I'm, I'm too old to be doing things like that. God, I was. It's, I would have done it when I was young. I'm when I'm old. Um, yeah. So uh, show this Saturday. Then obviously Liam Williams in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And uh, as you said, you, you're going to be busy till uh, till Christmas essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we're going to be running regularly, and we're going to be putting some good stuff together. Got a few guys to get out again, um, and I'm looking forward to that. It, it, you know, we've just got. To do what we're doing within the environment that we're living in now, mm. in the world we're living in. Eddie's got a, a show next week as well, but we, we saw on Talk Sport, uh, he made some comments and said um, that he will stick to his meeting with you at the end of this month and that, that he'll get you a slap up meal, so you won't even have to pay for it, Frank. Well, you better up and do it because I'm losing so much weight here waiting for it. Now, um, I'm, I'm quite sure we will have this meeting. Okay. Have you, have you spoken s since um, or recently? We. There was a, an email exchange. Okay, yesterday. so that, that's that's promising. So we'll see what happens. Okay, but um, yeah, get this meeting on and uh, get some big fights made, eh? Yeah, well, we're we're trying hard to make big fights, and we are making. You know, we've made some. I think our shows have been very good. We've had some good fights on this, and you know, some. Uh, yeah, in difficult circumstances, it's been good, and they've done the same. To be fair, so they've had a couple of good, couple of good fights on on their shows. Um, and I think that's because of the opponents again not going into the lion's den going into neutral venues mm. and I think that that's my, my sort of my view of what's going to happen on Saturday with Consom but um, we've just got to keep doing what we're doing and getting out there and, and, and keeping the sport relevant that it doesn't get forgotten you know a lot of, the, a lot of football clubs are terrified now of what's gone down you know you think they come back into putting the sport back on in stadiums, taking people off a of furlough, on the understanding they when you start having live, getting live gates in on the first of October, that's gone now, mm. and this leaves them in a, some of them in a real terrible predicament, mm. and that for our sport is the same, you know, you know we're getting some fighters work, but we're not getting all our fighters work, and it's all those other guys that I mentioned, you know, as I mentioned, who fight on, you know, the, the uh, halls around the country, they're not, they haven't done anything for what now, has it? It's nearly, was it nearly nine months? Mm. It's terrible times. Yeah. So the government needs to come. We need to get something. They're doing something for sport. Don't forget boxing is a national sport in this country. You know, it's a, a, a sport that does a lot of good as well, amateur level, as well as pro level, giving people livings. But at amateur level, there's no there's no tournaments or anything going on. Mm. So we don't want to lose these kids. Don't don't you know? We don't want to see them drift off and do something else and, and lose those generation. Lose no. that generation. No, it's, a, it's a very valid point. I uh, spoke to Tyson recently, Frank? Uh, I spoke to him, what was it, about three or four days ago. He was all in good spirits, yeah, as always. Sugar Hills in Morecambe with him? Yeah, 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 yeah. They had the pair of in the phone, he was in the car talking to me while he was with him, yeah. He's, he's brilliant. He's, brilliant. He's, in really, he's, he's, got, he's in really good frame of mind. Um, I think he may be coming to the show on Saturday. Was he? Yeah, he said he was. See what happened. Better get his Diet Cokes ready then. <laughs> Got my <one> eyes. <laughs>
cut the Stellas. Uh, Frank, threw me off that. I was gonna, what was I gonna ask you? What are you oh, gonna ask me? Yeah, oh, he, uh, he made some comments recently about uh, Deontay Wilder's silence and said but a lot of people have been criticising the fact that Deontay's been silent, but he thinks that's really dangerous. I agree with him because, look, Deontay Wilder has a contract and that's it. And that contract is to fight Tyson. And we're trying, all of us are involved, are trying to get the fight on for the 19th of December. We're all working hard. I don't know what's going to happen, but that's what we're all working hard to do. So Deontay, I'm quite sure if it's the button gets pressed and that's the, there's the venue, date's confirmed, I'm sure you'll hear a lot from him then. But now, what's what is that? There's no, what's he got to say? Well, Tyson reckons he's just in the gym working. He is. I know he's in the gym. I spoke to Shelley Finkel, his manager, and he tells me he said he's really up and you know ready to go. Mm. So a lot of people, it's, it's a common thing, isn't it? When when a fighter loses, just write him off. Just well, they do. Look, this this fellow was world champion for six years. Yeah. People forget <laughs> knocking that. everyone's brains yeah, out. I mean, absolutely, you know, poleaxing people for six years. He was doing that. You know, mandatories and everything, coming from behind in fights and doing it. He's a devastating puncher, and I'm sure he's now, you know, having, look, he's, he's done what? What is it, 19 rounds with Tyson? Is it 19? I think it's about that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, 19. 19 yeah. rounds with Tyson. So he knows Tyson Fury, he knows what to expect, and he knows his game plan, his tactics have to change. Because he can't beat Tyson doing what he's done in the previous two fights. So who knows what he's doing in the gym? I'm sure they're working on it. I think by the time it, it gets around to the fight, there will be a lot of intrigue again. Of course there will, yeah. Uh, uh. yeah. Also, uh, Tyson uh, spoke about Anthony Joshua because Anthony um, said a few things about both Tyson and Deontay. And he said, interestingly, that he feels like beating either of them or fighting either of them wouldn't be the biggest name on, it, on his record. <laughs> He's been locked down too long. What's he talking about? Biggest name, the biggest name on his record. If if the fight happens with with Tyson, that's the biggest name. That's the biggest name he's going to get in the ring with. He fought Klitschko. Tyson had already done a job on him eighteen months before that in Germany. Never laid a glove on him. He had he had a tremendous fight with Klitschko. It was a great fight in his home country. Tyson was abroad doing the fight. Tremendous fight. Klitschko had him on the back on his on his backside. Knocked him over. He didn't do that to Tyson. Tyson took him to school out there. Um, who, who else they share as common, common opponents? No. I mean, in terms of Joshua's record, he's fought Joseph Parker, Alexander Povetkin, Carlos yeah. Takam. Are any of those fighters you've mentioned, are any of those better than Deontay Wilder? No, of course not. There you go. So, you know, he was the man. And by the way, Anthony Joshua didn't fight Deontay Wilder. He was offered the fight. He was offered an $80 million package and didn't take it. So I don't need, you know, don't, for him to come out with that is pretty daft. You know, the fact of the matter is him and Tyson is a massive fight. When Tyson fights AJ, that might be the biggest name on his record, on Tyson's record. Klitschko or Wilder, would it be? It'd be, uh, uh, well, Klitschko was the best of his generation, and Wilder, heavyweight champion for six years, you know. AJ, we see what happened in the States against Ruiz. And that's what I look at, so that's the other way round. Do you think you're just trying to play a few mind games, aren't you? Uh, obviously, with the greatest respect, you ain't going to win mind games with Tyson. <laughs> he does that every day. I mean, he has everybody for breakfast, doesn't he, in that game? What do you think about the Pulev fight? I, look, I think he should beat Pulev. Um, Pulev's old. How old's Pulev now? Thirty-seven. He's getting on a bit. Isn't Thirty-six, thirty-seven. Um, yeah, he, he's he's not he's not like a far, he's not a fast guy, is he? But he's not a bad banger. And I think anybody who fights AJ, they'd be looking to that fight that he had in New York. They know he's vulnerable. That's the fact of the matter. You know, if he was fighting one of my guys. I know what my instructions would be to him. What I would be saying, that, you know, what's the key to fight? You got to go and put it on him. He's got that Usyk mandatory as well. Um, yeah. Is is that a concern that if, if he jumped in with Usyk, that I think every fight's a concern. You know, anything can happen. And why, why, you know, why have, why do that? 
I hope that we don't, you know, I hope that we can go straight to the fight. Why we couldn't go to that fight, I don't know, because, you know, Usyk is with Matchroom, so hopefully they can work it out with their man. You know, we got rid of our obligation, or we didn't get rid of it, they got rid of it themselves. Um, he's gone, uh, Dylan White. So we've got a window to make this happen now. Everybody wants to make it happen, so let's work between us to get it on. It's a, it's a, it's a super fight for, the, for everybody, for boxing, you know, world boxing, for the fans, for, you know, for everyone involved. There's no, there's no downside to it. And if the belts, all the belts, and it'd be great if all the belts were on the line, but if they're not, then so be it. You know, people are not buying tickets to look at a belt, they're buying a ticket to look at a fight. That's what Tyson says, because he's won every belt, so. Yeah, yeah. Do you think it's most likely um, Middle East or UK for that fight? Nowhere else? Look, I'd love it to go on in the UK. I'd love it to go on, but it's all about money, isn't it? You know, people, you know, why did the rumble in the jungle happen in Zaire? Because Mobuto put up the money for the fight to go there. You know, why did the thriller in Manila happen in the Philippines? Because the government, Marcos, put up the money there. So it's, uh, it's, it's that's, that's what happens. It's nothing unusual. Okay. Well, hopefully uh, we get two, if not three, of those fights uh, well, next year. Well, great, we can get them away, won't it, all of them? It's just <laughs> fantastic. It's what boxing's all about. That's what, that's what everybody wants to see. Who's the best? The best fighting the best. OK, Frank Warren, thank you very much for Songs of IFL TV. It's a pleasure, mate, as always, Emma. Oh, quickly, shout out to uh, Freddie as well. He's just had a kid, another addition to the Warren family. I know, I'll tell you what, it's a bloody expanding tribe we've got. <laughs> but Brilliant. it's a girl this time. Yeah, yeah, normally boys. We've got another girl, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, uh, we'll see you at the show on Saturday. We certainly will, mate. Okay, tune in to BT Sport this Saturday night. Look forward to that. Struggling with debt, bills, loans, credit cards. Need a way out? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt matters.